Hey guys, Dan Cavallari, tech editor at Velo News, and I am here in Cave Creek, Arizona, riding the Evil Bikes Chamois Hagar. And uh, one of the unique things about this bike, as you can see right from looking at it, is the super, super slack head tube angle, 66.67 uh, degrees. If you're not familiar with, with head tube angles, to give you a sense, uh, some road bikes that you've probably ridden are in the 72 to 74 degree range uh, in, in terms of, that, that's very steep. Uh, mountain bikes usually hedge towards 66 degrees and that's some pretty slack uh, mountain bike head tube angles too. Uh, so what we're looking at is very heavily influenced by the mountain bike world. Uh, as somebody who came from the mountain bike world, this felt pretty familiar to me. I'm very curious to see what my full-bred roadie colleague Ben Delaney has to say about this uh, unique ride. Shammy Hagar is a wild man. As a roadie hopping on this bike, it feels crazy from literally the first pedal stroke before the other foot is even clipped in. The front end almost felt floppy like a downhill bike, like it was a heavy, heavy front wheel. But as soon as you're over two miles an hour, that smooths right out. And the, the, the physics and the geometry that works so well in mountain biking carry over uh, to this bike here. It, it was odd just looking at the thing from the cockpit, the, the stem. It's, it's like a, what, like a half an inch long? This is bananas to me. And the front hub is sitting way out in space. But the, the geometry is such that the reach is still similar to what you would get on a, a standard gravel bike with a, with a longer stem. It's just a total reconfiguration of it. Um, I like the fact that the chain stays, they're a little bit longer. They, you know, they're 430 as opposed to like a standard 420, uh, but it doesn't feel like it's a semi-truck type long affair. Sure, in tight switchbacks, it's, it's maybe a scooch longer, but um, we were all over tight, windy, single trap dipping and diving, and, and uh, I felt like the, the operator was the only thing holding the operation back, not the, the machine itself. Having 50 mil tires is just all kinds of plushness. So let's talk gravel racing. Is this the gravel race machine? Well, like anything else, it depends on what gravel race you're wanting to do. Now, if, if your idea of a good gravel race time is a very like road-centric thing, like a steamboat gravel, then this might be a bit of overkill, although of course you can just put uh, skinnier tires on there and be good to go. But if your idea of a gravel race is something like Grinduro, where there's some uphill, but there's plenty of downhill single track also, and you want to get low and get gnar, then this is a pretty ideal machine for that. So after three days riding here in the desert, this was changing my mind on what a gravel bike could or should be. Uh, looking forward to riding this more in the near future. If you are coming from the roadside, uh, this is nothing like anything you've, you've ridden before. Uh, the trail figure uh, is somewhere around 93, so that's incredibly long. So, of course, uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Luckily for me, I come from the mountain bike world. I felt pretty at home on this bike. Uh, it, it felt familiar to me. Uh, and other touches that also felt familiar coming from the mountain bike side, this has a dropper post on it. So you can get very, very low uh, to get yourself uh, in a position to descend incredibly fast. Uh, Aside from that, you've got a very sloped top tube, uh, again, in, in an effort to get you down low when you're, when you're really ripping down uh, some fast descents. The, the interesting thing about the Chamois Hagar is that while it's got a lot of mountain bike roots, uh, there's also elements of, of some roadie and even, you know, cyclocross type geometry. And in, in that sense, the the, uh, the seat tube angle is not as slack as you would find on a mountain bike, for example. Uh, and it actually kind of butts up against the UCI regulations of how far forward you can have a saddle. So uh, in that sense, it's, it's very pedalable, uh, but it's also incredibly stable on descent. So it's an interesting beast for sure. You can get heaps of tire clearance. We are riding uh, 50 millimeter, 700 by 50 millimeter tires today uh, here in the desert. This is tailor-made for the kind of riding we've been doing the last three days. Uh, and while I've had a blast on this, I'm really curious to see how this is going to react to my home roads where I've spent more time on more roadie geometry, cyclocross geometry, uh, treading into the gravel world. So I think we'll see uh, a, dis a very different type of ride 
uh, characteristic from this than you will from something more aggressively uh, steep in the front end uh, where you can really flick it around tight corners which I would say is probably one of if you want I don't even wouldn't call it a weakness it's just a learning curve to this bike uh, tight tight corners are a little tougher because of that slack head shoe angle so if you're coming from the mountain bike side I think you're gonna find some familiar territory here if you're coming from the road side it might be a little bit more of a learning curve than you would like but this thing is primed for adventure uh, it is primed for your longest days on the bike I think you're gonna have a blast on the Shami Hagar Dan, what are we doing out here in the desert? I have no freaking idea. No, we're riding bikes.